Thank you for downloading or streaming the Be Our Guest podcast. Today, we have a show that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. It's a new concept show that I'm calling the BOGP Time Capsule. Today, we opened up the phone lines about 36 hours after the announcement that Disney was going to get rid of Genie Plus and change it to a new Lightning Lane system where you can go back to basically what's going to be a modified paid FastPass Plus system where starting on July 24th, you can have tiered Lightning Lane experiences. Plus, you can also purchase the individual Lightning Lanes, which are going to be called Lightning Lane Single Passes. And then the Genie Plus will be called Lightning Lane Multi Passes. So what we did was open up the phone lines and talk about how this is going to affect some of our listeners' future vacations. Um, what do we think? Is this a net positive, a net negative? And how is it going to affect the normal Disney fan this and much more. So we get a great conversation. We captured this on today's show. So we can go back six months from now, a year from now, five years from now, and see what we thought of the immediate after effects of this being announced. And once this uh, rolls out and it's been established, we can see, hey, were we right or were we wrong right when it was announced? So uh, we have a little time capsule today. Don't forget today's show brought to you by the Magic for Less Travel. We'd love to help you plan your next Disney adventure for no additional cost to you. Check out all the details today over at themagicforless.com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link when you shop online. That one extra click supports everything we do throughout the year. Be our guest podcast.com slash Amazon. And thank you so very much to our Patreon supporters. You guys make all this possible, and I thank you so very much for that. You can support us for just $5 a month. We'd love to have you support us. And you'll get a bonus show called Mike in the Midwest. Coming over this week, patreon.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. Ready to take a trip to the world? You found the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. This is where your memories come front and center on our podcast stage. Well, hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the first ever concept show that I've thought about for about the last five years, and we're going to try it here on the Be Our Guest podcast today. So happy Friday, wherever you're tuned in around the world. I think this show is episode 2520 here on the feed, and I think I'm still on the Disney Fantasy, maybe at Castaway Key today. I'm not positive where this show is going to hit the feed, but I think that's where I'm going to put this one out. So I hope you're having a great Friday or a great Wednesday or just a great day whenever you decide to listen to our show of course that's the house band and my name is Mike Rallman host of the BR Guest Podcast you can find me on the socials at BR Guest Mike BRGuestPodcast.com but mostly in the discord channel which is our clubhouse which is awesome we have about a thousand Disney fans from our community talking Disney 24 7 we also talk sports we also talk about our corner of the world. We have a good time. You need to be there. VRGuestPodcast.com slash Discord. So come on over today. But today I mentioned it's kind of a concept show that I've been wanting to do here for a little bit. And I'll be honest, I'm recording this one a bit early because as you guys know, I'm in the studio before my cruise. We're going on a cruise on the Disney Fantasy. I'm probably on the cruise right now as you're hearing this show on the feed. So... Hi, everybody from the Caribbean. Uh, hopefully everything's going well. I don't know because I'm still at home before the cruise at this point, but I had to get the content out because we never miss shows for you. We make sure that you have con uh, content to listen to every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But here's the thing. I've thought about this because we've had a show that we've been blessed to have a long uh, lifespan. We've been doing the show for over 16 years. So in that 16 years, we've seen a lot of changes to our experiences with the Disney parks in the Disney Cruise Line. We've seen the launch of the Disney Dream. We've seen the launch of the Disney Fantasy. We've seen magic bands come into existence. We've seen what was called Mobile Me, uh, Mobile and Mobile Me. That was Apple Mobile Magic and Photo Pass. I was there when they had the, uh, the media event. I remember walking around. They took us into a back room behind Sleepy Hollow to show us the very first magic bands. And I was like, ah, Samantha Brown was there at the breakfast and talked to us about how cool this concept was going to be. I'll have to post some pictures over in the discord. I'm a huge Samantha Brown fan, by the way. So I was blown away by that. Um, but we've had all these changes that have happened to how we uh, experience Disney parks. And I could not have been more excited to be able to go to Walt Disney world and have a bracelet at the time. I called it a bracelet with my theme park ticket on it. 
And I thought that was such a foreign concept at the time. But what I've thought about over the past little bit of time is that how cool would it have been if at the time we could have had basically a time capsule where we could have all given our thoughts on what it meant to us right then when these things were announced. I would have loved to have heard what, what you would have said about magic bands the day they were announced or the day that, um, you know, fast pass system came into existence when they told us, okay, now you can reserve three attractions before you leave home, but you got to go to these little kiosks outside of each attraction. You got to collect these little pieces of paper. You come back at a predetermined time. You got a two hour window to ride the attraction. I'd have loved to heard what we said. I don't know what we said the day that was announced, but I'm also kind of a historian. I would have loved to have had an oral history of that. So what I want this show to be, and it's not going to be a long show. We're probably not even going to go an hour. It's probably going to be 45 minutes or so. So I want you to call in 407-413-9395 and give your thoughts here in a second. Not yet. Just one second. Cause I want to give the, give the information real quick and just give your thoughts on what you think of the changes to genie plus in the lightning lane system. So we know that as of this recording, It was announced earlier this week that on July 24th, Walt Disney World is going to change the Genie Plus system to Lightning Lane Multipass and Lightning Lane Single Pass. So I'm assuming we're going to call this LLMP and LLSP. Kind of sounds like NASA all of a sudden, but that's just my thoughts. And uh, it's going to blend, it says, features from current services and the previously offered FastPass Plus service. Uh, which will allow you the biggest thing is that we can now schedule as guests our attractions before we leave home. Put an asterisk there for our international guests. Mohawk Scotland, one of our friends over in the Discord, wanted me to remind you, international guests at the time of this recording cannot do this until they enter the United States of America. I have to think this will be worked out, but as of now, international guests have to be in the States before they can make their Um, lightning lane selections, but here's how it works. The new lightning lane pass features guests can make lightning lane pass, uh, selections ahead of their arrival seven days in advance for resort guests and three days in advance for non resort guests, the abilities to choose experiences and times prior to purchasing. So before you even make the purchase, you can see what's available. I like that. You know, you get to see before you buy, right? I mean, it's like going to the grocery store and looking at the fruit. You get, to, get to touch it, squeeze it, see what's going on. It's like Mr. Whipple back in the day. Don't squeeze the Charmin. <laughs> I'm old. That's that's a, that's a deep, deep uh, take there. And finally, book lightning lane passes for multiple vacation days all in a single day. So I'm sure they're going to work over the app. So we get some new looking there. But you also have tiers of the attractions, except for Animal Kingdom. I peeked those out. There's no tiers at Animal Kingdom. So you're going to go into the... Um, into the app or the website and check out, you know, the tiers. You can choose one selection from tier one, two selections from tier two. So that's kind of how it was with the old fast pass system. I'm not going to go over what's where you can find that online. Pretty simple. It's the big guys and then kind of the smaller guys. Um, and then we, the best thing to do too is go into our discord. I mean, the discord was on fire when this was announced last Tuesday with strategies of how we can still stack experiences possibly and all that stuff. So those are the basics because I don't want to go super long on this. You can do the research, but what do you think? Because you're going to still have to pay for it. It's similar to the old fast pass system with three experiences before you leave home. Used to be 30 days ahead of time. Now they do have to be in the same park initially, but once you use those three experiences, you can go to what we used to call the rolling fast pass. So you can do that. But now is when I want to open the phones because I want to get multiple voices in here on this conversation to mark the time capsule, to mark the time. So the phone number is 407-413-9395. That's 407-413-9395. And let's just have a talk about this new system and and how it's going to affect your vacation. What do you think? Let's talk about it. I believe we have Jason on the line. Jason, what's going on tonight? What's up, Mike? How we doing? Sorry, hey. I uh, gave you a little bit of a jump scare <laughs> there earlier. That's all right. That was the pre-show for folks that aren't listening. Uh, the, the, before we uh, started recording the audio podcast, yeah, I had the volume up and I was messing around here in the studio. You gave me a little jolt, but uh, 
After a long day, I needed that. So, uh, you know, you got to do something to get you to college football <laughs> season. So what's going on? Oh, yeah. What's up? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm excited about this change, especially as a local. I mean, I think just being able to book your uh, lightning lanes in advance, like it kind of gives me a reason to get on the app and kind of just search around and see if maybe I can find in a couple days in advance, like, you know, attractions that maybe I haven't rode in a while just because of the, you know, uh, wait lines are long or anything like that. So I think it kind of just gives me as a local reason to, um, reason to buy it. I mean, with the Genie Plus system, I never really used it. We just kind of popped into the parks and, and popped out. But now being able to kind of book them in advance, we can kind of look ahead and, you know, if we have a free day in a couple of days, I can kind of get on the app and see, you know, what's available. So I think you have a great perspective, though, being local, because, you know, 90 percent of the folks listening to our show are obviously folks that travel in from out of town. We plan these trips nine months ahead of time. So every hour, every day is going to be scheduled and precious because we're not there very often. Um, for you though, from your perspective, besides that kind of, you get the opportunity to, to, you know, just kind of jump in and see things, but what do you think that they're getting right in the changes for everybody? As far as like, what are they scrapping out of genie plus? Because really what it is, I mean, to me, it is almost like 80% fast pass plus. Don't you think? I mean, I've seen people post online and I think these people are pretty close to being right saying we could have just skipped the last four to five years and just charged for fast pass plus because that system really wasn't that broken. I mean, and, and I think yeah, it, they're almost right. I mean, in a lot of ways. Yeah. It kind of feels like we just slowly made our way back to fast pass plus. Um, I think scra I think I think the biggest plus with this new system now is you don't have to pay until you have your lightning lane selected and I believe you can modify the time before you pay as well. So I think just knowing like I got the rides that I want, I got the times that I'm comfortable with and then you have to pay. I think that's such a big plus it over genie plus where you kind of had to pay for it in advance and then it's like okay let's see what i can find and you know some people unfortunately like weren't able to get attractions that maybe they were looking for and then you kind of feel like you started out the day a little slighted you didn't you know sort of get what you want so i think the biggest plus is just that being able to get your three selections in you're comfortable with them. You, you like the times, and then, you know, you swipe your credit card and then you're good to go. And I think that's going to be fair for folks that are, because again, we're, I mean, especially like you and I, and you know, the folks that are tuned in here, George and Erica, you know, everybody, everybody's listening in today on the feed here on the show. We're all obviously all in, you know, and we, for the majority of us, we enjoy this stuff. We're nerds for this kind of stuff. So this is kind of like our chess, like we want to win the game. You know, this is, this is like a, this is like some kind of a, we're, we're crazy to, to, to enjoy this at, at a certain level, but it is, it drives you wild. And it, it, also at the same time, but do you think this is going to be something that's simpler? If they made it easier for Bob from Kansas, who brings his kids down for the first time, it, does this make more sense than Genie Plus? Because in the in the end, I mean, I know we're all trying to get the most out of our vacation, but I'm also wondering, what does you know Sue from Iowa, who's bringing her grandkids, you know, for three or four nights just to Walt Disney World to see a couple parks and have a good time? What do you think? Is this is this a net positive for? I mean, is she going to plan ahead of time, and is this going to be more user friendly for her? Because I know it's going to be good for us. We're going to figure it out. But what do you think for that? Yeah, totally. I think people, you know, I, I, you know, talk to family and friends that, you know, they're not as Disney savvy as, you know, you or me or anyone listening. Um, I feel like the most common thing said was like, wow, this Genie Plus system seems incredibly complicated. And I, I don't think you'll see that with this system. I think it's going to be very, at least from the screenshots that they, that Disney shared, I think it's going to be very simple to kind of just pick what you want. And it's just going to be like a one, two, three step process, very, you know, sim simplified. Um, so I think just from somebody that, you know, maybe doesn't get to visit as often or isn't as Disney savvy as, 
you know, anyone listening here, I think it's going to be such a, such an easier process for them. And it's just going to be a pain point that is just relieved and, you know, anyone will be able to kind of get this system, you know, firsthand without having to watch, you know, 50 YouTube videos mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. study like it's a, like it's a final exam for, you know, college or something like that. No, I totally agree. And, you know, it's one of those things and I don't know, again, people kind of have different mentalities, but I'm of the person I'm the kind of person that, I mean, this is just how I do with my work. Like I'm an inbox zero type person. And I know it's kind of uh, neurotic to try to be that way because like at nine o'clock at night, you know, 10 o'clock Eastern, I try to get my inbox for my work down to zero for my clients so that I know that when oh, I man. shut down for the night, I've answered, <laughs> you know, I've, I've like gotten back to everybody at least said I'm on it. You know, if I can't like respond to it, at least I, I've acknowledged that I'm working on it. Right. So everybody knows that I've, I've contacted them. You know, that's, and I can sleep better, right? I don't want to leave a bunch of things floating in the air. And with the Genie Plus system, with having to make choices like in the morning and you don't know what you're going to get, you know, I would be able to, I would feel better riding down on the plane knowing that I've already like made my selections a week out, right? I mean, does that not give you mental clarity and mental, just mental comfort, I would think, you know, as far as like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's supposed it's, to be vacation. And like every morning at 7 a.m. was almost like going through the ringer, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah, no, I think there's, I think there's just going to be so much less stress involved with picking these lightning lanes. And, you know, you it, it's something where you can select your rides and modify your times and everything. And then the fact that you you pay afterwards, like you're probably not going to pay until you're completely comfortable with your selection. So it's kind of just, you know you're getting at minimum three attractions that you really wanted to ride. And you just know that that day, okay, the first part of that day is taken care of. The stress of that is, you know, over. And yeah, you don't have to wake up at 7 a.m. and, you know, feel like you have to scramble to get everything going. And then once you make those selections, you kind of have to figure out the rest of your day, like on the fly. Um, so now you can kind of do that ahead of time. So you're more just waking up and, you know, knowing what you have in front of you. I 100% agree. Now, the one thing I do wish they would have kind of changed, I don't like the names. Like, I'm still confused about the names and I've been trying to let it settle in for about 48 hours at this point. I know it's been a while by the time this hits the feed probably, but lightning lane single pass. So that is individual lightning lane as we used to call it. So yeah. that's things like Tron, Rise, uh, Flight of Passage, I'm trying to think, uh, Cosmic Rewind, stuff like that. Um, and then Multilane is, um, that that's everything else. I mean, that's that's kind of, you know, it, it makes sense, right? It's everything except the big stuff. But Yeah, I wonder, I'm uh, curious why they didn't go back to just Fast Pass. Yes, uh, yeah, right? they own it. I know, that's exactly what, I mean, that's what I'm trying to say, really. I I would mean, it, everybody knows I would it. imagine a, they have a reason. I wouldn't know what the reason is, but yeah, it's it's... Hopefully it's a name that kind of, you know, sticks with us. And I get why they had to go off of Genie Plus too, because I feel like the word Genie nowadays just elicits just stress and complication. So I get why they had to go off of it. But yeah, I don't know why Fast Pass wasn't the option. Yeah, because the thing is with Fast Fast Pass, it's almost in the lexicon. You know what I'm saying? Like people will say because like I work with a lot of guests, right? I'm a travel agent. So I have people ask me questions all the time and they'll say, well, what's the fast pass equivalent for universal? And that, that's how they'll word it. Right. You know, for express pass, they'll say, well, I want fast pass at universal. That's how they say it. They don't say what is the line skipping option at universal or what is the way to shorten my weight experience at universal? They'll say, how do I get a fast pass? You know? So like Disney, it seems like that is just like, that's gold sitting on the shelf. Like, you know, go back to the bookshelf, grab it, and pull it back out, man. And it had a great logo. I mean, it, it was a very simple, but yeah, they, like I, I can picture it right they now had in my everything head. There, like they had, yeah, fast pass signage all throughout the park. Like it was there. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what the, uh, I don't know why they couldn't go back to that. But I'm just, I, I guess I mean, we'll just, I guess we'll learn multicast. Uh, I mean, we'll learn it. And, you know, of course, all of us that are listening to the show, we'll, we'll learn it quickly and we'll adapt. And we'll, you know, the thing is with all the systems, we'll have a leg up on 95% of the guests. But I think that 
this will also at the same time kind of uh, even out the field because I don't think there's as much of a curve. I think with Genie Plus, it was a lot of haves and have nots, right? It was the people who just money wasn't an object. So you just buy Genie Plus every time. I'll be honest. I never bought Genie Plus at the Magic Kingdom one time. Except one day with Paige, the day we got off the cruise last year because she only had one day at the studios and she had to go back to Chicago. She hadn't seen any of the stuff. So we splurged and man, we got a ton done. I mean, I'll give it that. Like we saw everything in the park. Like we did it all, but I'm not going to pay, you know, for four genie pluses every day of my vacation. That just gets crazy expensive in my, in my world. I just can't do that every day, but I did it for that one day and and it accomplished my goal because we have one day to wipe out the entire park and we did it. But I think this will simplify it and everybody will be able to, uh, to kind of fairly, at home when you're not under the pressure and you're not trying to like get your kids fed to get on the Skyliner. Like there's a lot going on at Walt Disney world. You need to have that stuff done at the breakfast table back in Iowa, you know, kind of. Yeah, exactly. And like, you don't have to necessarily, at least what it sounds like, you don't have to be on your phone, you know, every so often while you're in the park, you know, if you, if you, if you do it how you want, of when you book and you have those three options, you might not have to open up your phone to book another one until maybe the afternoon. If you're satisfied with those three or when you scan in on your first one, and then you can kind of leave it alone for a little bit. It's not like genie plus where you kind of, it kind of sort of felt like you had to be on your phone and keep refreshing and, and scanning. And, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. it, it, feels like it might be a little bit less phone time, which I feel like is what everybody kind of wants while you're, you know, walking around the park. hundred percent. And I agree. Like, you know, you could go, like you said, after you scan in your first one, you could start looking for that next one if you want to, it's your choice. But if you just want to chill and just ride out your first three and then go from there, you could do that and not have to be on your phone till lunch, you know, and you could just do three more at lunchtime and, you know, really maximize. So it gives you options is what I like. And that's what I like on a vacation is options. Jason. Hey, great first call. Let me just tell you, I appreciate everything you bring over to the discord and the clubhouse because the conversations that you contribute to and that you keep going, make that place fun for me and all of our listeners. And uh, man, it's just great having you over there. I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. I love the discord. If you aren't on the discord, get on the discord. It's nonstop Disney talk. If you had any questions about Disney, they get answered <laughs> Yeah, they do. within, within an hour. Somebody's always up, you know, there's so many people in there that I would imagine most of the Disney experiences that you can have have been done by somebody in that discord. So if you have a question on, you know, a tour or a restaurant or something, somebody has a memory there and they will gladly share their experience and you know exactly what you're getting. Um, so yeah, I couldn't recommend the discord enough. It is. It's awesome to hang out there. I love it, man. It's, it's addicting. I mean, I'm in there too much. And like, so I was asking about fishing this afternoon. I was like, I've been fishing. I've been, I've been with Mark Yerkes. He always, he's a fishing buddy. And yeah, someone, go, asked, someone yeah. asked about fishing at, on Disney property <laughs> and they got an answer within, I don't know. I don't even know what the time was, but like, like they, minutes. they already know now. So exactly. you don't have to guess Photos, or anything yeah. like that. It's just, it's awesome. It's fun. Hey, I appreciate you, Jason. And, uh, we're almost, well, it's, it's probably about the time this comes out, July. College football season will kick off next month. You're Mizzou Tigers. A little, little playoff talk for Mizzou? Dude, it's, uh, play, it's playoffs and bust this year, yes. And uh, 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 I'm talking maybe a little Heisman Trophy this year out of uh, Como. We'll see. Oh, that would be interesting. Honestly, Luther Burden, wide receiver Heisman. Kid's um, amazing. I'm not afraid to say it. Kid's amazing, but I won't jinx him. But uh, I'll be there cheering him <laughs> on every every inch of the way. Love the kid. Yes, sir. All right, Jason. Hey, we'll talk soon, buddy. You take care. Thank you. All right, I'll talk to you later. Talk to you soon. Mike. All right, bye-bye. All right, 407-413-9395. This is the capsule. We want to get your thoughts initially on the new system for Lightning Lanes and Genie Plus because... We want to hear it right when it comes out so we can have this for 10 years from now. We'll say this is what we thought two days after the announcement. All right, next call. looks like it's Alfred. Alfred, what's going on? Happy Thursday as it is. What's going on? Not much. Just hanging out here. What do you think about the changes? I've been on the line with you. I know. How you been? Yes. Good. Uh, I've had my share of surgeries, but I'm doing good. Man, you and me, well, I haven't had surgeries. I've just had a bunch of 
bad yeah. stuff, but I'm okay. We're hanging in there. We're yeah. here though. We're not exactly. talking about that. We're talking about all these changes. So what do you think? Genie Plus change into multi pass, single pass lightning lanes. What do you think? Okay. Here's what I think. I think it's good, but it's bad at the same time. Okay. And my thinking is it's good because it brings back the idea of fast pass. Mm -hmm. So people know that they know it's multi-tiered, tier one, tier two. And the problem I have is the money. Why are they charging for this? It's always going to be. I mean, okay. that, that that ship has sailed. It's never, ever going to go back to free. I mean, I've just given it's up on never that. Never going to free. Yeah. I, I said that to my friend. Yeah. But we have to look at what are they going to be charging for to, to have the multi-pass. It'll be the same probably as, as, like, as a Genie Plus. I would imagine the price will be exactly the same. Like the, the yeah, what flex was pricing. That? I don't remember. For the multi-pass, it'll probably be, because it's going to be seasonal, it'll be that flex pricing during the holidays, probably about 30 bucks mm -hmm. a day or something, 35 bucks a day That's what ish. I figured. Yeah, okay. a little bit lower during slower times. Yeah. Uh, now, with it, because I'm a little confused, but if you have the multi-pass, after you use your three, you can get more. You can actually get your, so... As far as we know, and I think George is right in the chat here, he's over on Facebook, and then George John San Antonio knows, and this is what I, I believe this too. After you scan in for your first one, you can start getting your mm -hmm. next one because you can hold three at yeah. any time. Okay. So once you scan right. in for your first one, your first one's gone. So now technically at that right. point you're holding two, so then you can go after a third one. So then you, you can always have – basically it's like having a deck – like playing like cards – you can always have three cards right. in your hand. So as soon as you, you scan in for your first one, you, you've thrown one. away one. Yep, yep. You can always yeah. have three. Yep. But the thing is, where do you get that next one from? Is it level one or level two? I'd imagine it's, well, I, what I would think is if you scan into a level one, like a tier one attraction, you could probably get a tier one. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. I, I bet you could hold one. That, what I'm guessing is you can only hold one tier one. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so Out if you scan it, if you scan in for yeah. guardians, now I don't think you can repeat anything. So you probably can't do guardians again. So what else would be tier one? It, I don't have the list in front of me, but well, if, the thing is they said that tier one, they listed the rides and tier two, they listed the rides. Then below that was the individual lightning lane. And that's where those popular ones are. Yeah. yeah, and you that, have yeah. to pay separately for them. Yep. Sorry, you're right. You're right. I yeah, I got that. About you. So Guardians would not be in there. Guardians is a is no. a single. Sorry, it's it's not individual lightning yeah. lane anymore. It's a single single, single lane multi pass. Yeah. No, it's a lightning yep. lane. It's sorry, I got it wrong. It's a lightning lane single pass. It's the lightning lanes first. Right. Lightning Lane yeah. single and, pass is but the But how much are they going to charge for that when they've already got you paying for the multi pass? See, what? this is where I'm a little upset with Disney. Okay. We pay enough as it is to go there. Yeah, but that's no different. That's no different than the too? system. Yeah, but that's no different than the system now. You could buy Genie Plus. In mm -hmm. for the day to go into Epcot, or you could buy the multi mm -hmm. multi park Genie Plus for the day, and okay. then you could while you're in Epcot while you have that Genie Plus, you could buy, you know, a, a individual Lightning Lane to ride Guardians, mm -hmm. or you could do it to right. ride, you know, uh, go over to Animal Kingdom and ride uh, Flight of Passage. Yeah, I mean, it's that's right, exactly right. it's just different tech, just different words. Yeah, yeah. it's it's. It's hard, you know, to say, oh, I like it. I don't like it. You know, I like the fact that they just, they realized that they had to go back, at least in concept, to make it easier for people to understand. They and did. I think yep. that's what it is. I don't think they can use FastPass as a name. Because if people say, oh, I'm getting my fast pass, they're thinking it's free. 
And that's the difference. That's why they had to name it this way, I think. That could be it. Yeah, because Fast Pass was associated yeah. with being free. That could, that could, that makes sense. It's not called yeah. Free Pass, but <laughs> but yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, that, that does make sense. Fast Pass was free. Yeah. Yeah. So, but they needed to make it simple again. So, because pe- I think people were just saying, oh, Genie Plus is just, too difficult, too hard. It was, and it's it, it, yeah. it's time to flush it, get rid of it. Let's try something new. Yeah, and I'm glad. And I think Disney realized that. All right, but yeah. Now my other question with this is, how does this affect the DAS? I don't think it has anything. I mean, they they changed the DAS system, you know, a couple about well about a month ago at the Magic King or. or Walt Disney World and recently well, to Disneyland. make it harder to get. That's what happened. I mean, they, yeah. they just they just clarified the rules. Yeah. 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 And they made it harder to get because people I've seen different things. I've seen like people do videos and the person is physically sick in a wheelchair and she got turned down for it. That's crazy to me. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't it's seen. Like, yeah, I don't have any. I don't have any experience. With, I haven't seen it, so I. I yeah. don't know. I haven't seen that. Yeah. So I'm thinking like they just want to do away with that completely, because that with that DOS program you don't pay. Yeah, that's the I don't difference. know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I have not seen that, so I can't yeah. comment on it. Yeah. So um, yeah, but. I think overall this is going to be good because people will understand it. I agree. Now if people decide to buy it, that's their choice. Yep. Cause I've never bought genie yeah. plus except one day out of all the days I've been there since it's been around. Yeah. I buy it at Disneyland I. though. Every time. Mm-hmm. Cause it's part well, of my how package. How is it different at Disneyland? One, I can buy it ahead of time and just tack it onto my package. That's the one of the things. Mm-hmm. So I just buy it as part of my package. And so it's on okay. my tickets automatically. And plus, mm-hmm. uh, the attractions are so close together, both at DCA and at Disneyland, that I just uh-huh. I just pick whatever's available. I don't like schedule things. I just like I'll get off of, I don't know. I'll get off of. It's a small world. Not just look what's what's available next. Oh, right. I can I can just right. schedule one for uh, Alice. Boom, five minutes. I'm on the ride. Mm-hmm. Like it's amazing. It's yeah. because of the yeah. density. There's so many attractions that you just you just never stop riding yeah. stuff out there. Crazy. Yep. Is what's the cost out in Disneyland? Because I haven't been there since. Shoot. That's the good news. See, it's built into your package. You don't even notice it. It's just part of the whole big bill. Yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's about the same you as don't world. Know. It's about the I don't notice it when I pay for it. It's about the same as world. It's similar. Similar price. Yeah. Okay. Per day. Yeah. It's similar. I figured it might be a little less, but no, it's about the same. Everything okay. at Disneyland's about the same. Right. It's not much. Disneyland's yeah. not cheaper, trust me. It's about the same. I wish. Yeah. You know what I loved at Disneyland? The Max Pass. See, everybody everybody loved that. I never it. got to use that. That was before my time. I I was I yeah, was after it was like ten dollars and you can get, you know, one at a time, like yep. you just kept doing it. Yeah, everybody loved so. that. Because my guests that came back were like, I love Max Pass. I mean, people like <laughs> wanted, people wanted to marry Max Pass. They love uh-huh. it. Let's see. Uh, oh, Carolyn, she is our Disneyland expert out in Southern California. She says Disneyland's usually more thirty dollars. Last time she went in April for Genie Plus. So there you go. She okay. knows. Yeah. Appreciate Carolyn. She's always on so. that out there. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we're so. gonna try to get a few more voices right. in here because we're gonna try to keep this to about forty-five minutes. Because it's right. a Friday show. Sounds All right, Alpha. Hey, take care of yourself, and we'll talk to you soon. Great. All right. See you, brother. Take night. care. All right. You too. Bye bye. Bye-bye. All right, 407-413-9395, 407-413-9395. I saw some more folks trying to get in, so come on in now. The phone lines are open. Let's talk about how this is going to affect your future Walt Disney World vacations with the changes to Genie Plus and the uh, Lightning Lane Multipass and the Lightning Lane Single Pass. Are you excited to schedule seven days before you leave home? Or what about our international guests? Right now, they do not get to uh, make their selections until they hit the United States. So for the most part, 
unless they're doing this at the airport when they land, they, they don't get the advantage of being a resort guest. Right. I mean, that's to me, that's not, that's not fair at all. Um, I know that over in the discord, Mohawk Scotland, which is one of our friends over in the discord, he was trying to use a, uh, a VPN, a virtual private network, which is kind of a way to, to get around geographical restrictions with your computer and appear to uh, pop out of a, uh, a server in the United States, which apparently has worked successfully for many situations similar to this. You can do that with like your Netflix account. If you want to watch some uh, material that may or may not be available in your part of the world. Uh, but apparently Disney's already on this and that is blocked. It is not. He, he sent a screenshot. They're on it. They know that you are not in the United States, even with a VPN. So they're being very proactive on this, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem. And again, I'm just a guy in Missouri that this is still very new as we're recording. This, this has just been announced less than 48 hours ago. I just don't see why there would be a reason to in air quotes make the playing field unfair for international guests when Walt Disney world is such an international destination. There are a lot of folks that come over from England or come down from Canada or from just other parts of the world, you know, just other parts of Europe and so forth. And I just think that not allowing everybody the exact same advantage if you're staying at the grand floridian or the beach club or you know pop Century, wherever you're staying on site every person should get the same on-site benefits no matter where you're coming from so what i'm hoping is that the infrastructure isn't there i don't know why it wouldn't be because again i don't know i don't have any top secret understanding of how all that behind the scenes stuff works but I just hope it gets worked out quickly because I know over in the discord, we have Julie from Scotland. We have Ian, we have Mohawk. We have, you know, uh, Simon who was just hosting our shows last week with me when they come over, they shouldn't have to, you know, the first thing when they land schedule seven days worth of, of uh, their lightning lanes. That's not a very stress or that's not a very, uh, you know, relaxing start to your vacation to have to do that right off the bat for seven full days. And plus you're at a disadvantage because everybody else has been doing it seven days prior to that. So that was one of the things that Mohawk wanted me to mention because we're recording this. It's late at night over in Europe. <laughs> so I just said his piece and I agree with him that I hope that is fixed uh, over on Instagram though. Amanda B eight says, I think going back to the term fast pass would be too much like admitting defeat for Disney. So maybe that's a thought. And Brittany over on Instagram says, do y'all think there will be a test run of country bears before seven 17? We're going to be at Walt Disney world around the time of Mike's cruise. So we're just going to miss it. Ooh, that's not on this topic, but who knows the country bears. They sound like they're almost ready. I hope. And I would love to hear what it's all about. Country music. Not bad. All right. We have our next call on the line. Who's joining us. Hey, this is Abby from Indiana. Hey, 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 what's up Hoosier. How are you doing tonight? Good. How are you? So you're not down at Walt Disney World right now? Not yet. Um, we're going down for a week next week, and I moved down in September. I'm so proud of you. You're going to be making the magic for all of us, so uh, congratulations. Thank you. I'm getting really excited at this point. <laughs> I started to meet so many people online that I'm really looking forward to meeting in the real life. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to see you down there. I'm going to have to get in the parks and swing by or, you know, get, get to see at some point. I'll, you know, it's going to be super cool to see that. So, well, you're always in, you're always in tune with this, your mom as well, because you guys both run and do the races and all that and so forth. But what did you think when you heard this news? Because you guys go to the parks often. What do you think? I think that we're probably more likely to buy the new system. We've only bought Genie Plus once at World. We've done it. The time we went to Disneyland, we did it there, and we liked it. But the time we were at World, it just seemed like a lot. And since we go all the time, it's not really about doing all of the rides. But I love planning, so I think being able to book stuff a week out will entice me to buy it more. I think that's it, too, for, like especially for our crowd. We get, well, because I think, too, like for our crowd, too, like we are all planners, especially, I mean, I do this for a living. So I'm the worst when it comes to my own trips. Like I, I don't make ADRs. I always joke when I go for, for, for any of the races, 
Scott, since he doesn't do this for a living, he gets the hugest kick out of it. Like he, he'll make ADRs for us and change them. And he's always telling me, oh, where do you want to go? I, I don't care, dude. Just tell me where I need to be. And I'll eat. I, I can eat anywhere at Walt Disney World and I'm happy. But he's always making them. Oh, but yeah. like I do this all day. So I get, you know, it's work for me to make ADRs because, you know, I get, I, the, you know, I'm thinking about it. I'm always on Disney sites all day. But for most of us, planning the trip, having stuff like this to do seven days before the trip makes the trip seven days more enjoyable, right? Because you get to, mm-hmm. like, in your mind's eye, you're thinking, okay okay, where do I want to be on this day? You know, on Tuesday, do we want to go to the Magic Kingdom? Okay, if we do, what's our strategy? Do we want to do Jungle Cruise and then do Pirates? And then out of Tier 1, do we want to do Seven Dwarves? Or do we want to do Space Mountain? You know, because just doing that takes you out of your, you know, ho-dum, boring day in Missouri or Indiana or whatever. And, you know, and then, you know, there is a payoff. When you get down to Walt Disney World, your day is better because you have a strategy, you have a plan. It, it's it, And I think oh, yeah. a lot of us are willing to pay money just to kind of have that kind of excitement in our life. I definitely think that that's something we'll consider, like, with buying it. Because back when it was 60 days out, my mom and I would always, like, make it an event going to book our Fast Passes. We would, like, get up early, take our computers to Starbucks. It looked like we were there on business <laughs> when we were just booking our vacation. But we loved doing that. You're talking to the choir here, though, because exactly so many other people are saying, mm-hmm, preach, Abby, that's what we do, too. I mean, because how many folks have we heard like in our discord or over the 15 years, 16 years we're doing the show that, you know, we have I've heard this on trip report so many times on the Monday shows when we put the trip together. We had a Disney night. We made our favorite meal from our favorite Disney restaurant. We get we had the family over. We watched a Disney movie. Then we decided, OK, here's the hotel we want to stay Here's the restaurants we're going to book when it comes time for 60 days for ADRs and so forth. Because for us, for us, Disney big geeks and fans, we eat this stuff up in the planning. They're giving us, they're giving us a little bit more pre-plan, which I think for us, it's a beautiful thing. And also for the casual fan, it's, it's pretty simple. Like it just lays it out. It's not very hard. Like you can make plans at seven days out. That's not hard to understand. Three things. For seven days before your trip. That's not hard to figure out. Genie Plus was harder. It was way harder. I had a friend who was going a few weeks ago, and she was asking me, she was like, hey, I know you're a big Disney person. Like, what do I need to do? And I was like, how much time do we have? Like, I was sending her YouTube videos and telling her, like, okay, so you need to do this at seven, but you also need to do this at seven. I'm like, it's a good thing that I just grew up learning all this stuff because it is so hard to explain to, like, a beginner. That is a good point. I mean, yeah, because I mean, I'm, obviously I'm older. I've been you know going there for forever. And when honestly, you know, when I was going to Walt Disney World at the beginning, you basically just you gave your ticket to the person at the t- they weren't even touch points at the time. You know, it was like a you put your ticket in the machine. And as soon as you went through the gates, that was it. I mean, that was honestly it. Mm-hmm. Like if you wanted to do anything else in the theme park, you just went and stood in line. I mean, it was, everything was yep. fair. Like there was no upsell. There was no nothing. You just stood it. You want to get food? You just went and stood in line, paid cash. We got your food. Like there was no thinking at all. Like when you think about where that has come from today, like you said, you grew up with it. So you understand like the, the nuances of the system and how to, you know, if you're, you set an alarm for six fifty eight and then start refreshing. And I mean, there's so many ways to kind of game the system so that you can be one up on the rest of the crowd and friends are lucky to have people like you to kind of give them the tips. So, because the thing is like these, these trips are so, here's the thing that gets me to the trips are so expensive that I never want anybody to be at a disadvantage, right? Cause you only get to go so many days yep. a, a year, every five years that if you have one bummer day that you're not getting the most advantage you can have, that that's a, that's a huge disappointment. You know, if somebody only gets mm-hmm. to do like seven attractions and they wanted to do 17, that's sad. And that that's not that's not acceptable. So I, I'm glad to hear that yeah. you're helping your friends out. Yeah. But I Good think stuff. people like us, we get spoiled by like not going and caring about how much we get done. I know because I, I don't care. Good. Yeah, because I, I don't like I can go and just, you know, I can go to the lunching pad. That's where we met the first time, by the way. The lunching pad, get a sweet tree, a uh, sweet cream cheese pretzel. Uh, Coke Zero, eat that, ride the people mover, 
and just kind of walk around the park. You know what? That, that'd be a fine like evening for me. I'd be totally fine. Like one ride, a, a treat, a soda, maybe grab an ice cream on the way out. That's a good night. Like a, <laughs> That's it. For me, like a successful day is going, doing like the country bears or the tiki birds, get it, and then leaving the Magic Kingdom to go eat at the Polynesian. And I'm happy with that, but... If this is your once-in-a-lifetime trip, you clearly want to do more than that. Abby, you're an old soul, and I love it. <laughs> That's great. Uh, your your parents raised you right. <laughs> they did a good job. They did. All right, well, I'm going to cut you loose, but hey, enjoy the rest of summer. Know that we're proud of you. Can't wait to see you down at Walt Disney World making the magic for everybody and tell your mom we said hello. Will do. You have a great evening. All right, take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right, 407-413-9395, 407-413-9395. We can take one more phone call before we got to close it out here to wrap up the show. But I just want to have this little time capsule to have this discussion about 48 hours after the announcement that Genie Plus is going away. And we're going to have Lightning Lane Single Pass, Lightning Lane Multipass. I'm make sure I'm getting, I still, every time I say that, I think I'm saying it wrong. That is right. Lightning Lane Multipass, Lightning Lane Single Pass, starting July 24th. So even as this comes out on the feed, it has not gone into effect, but it will over the next couple of weeks. You will be able to make seven, seven days before your arrival. You'll be able to make three attraction selections from tiers at the Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Disney's Hollywood Studios. For some reason, Animal Kingdom is not tiered. And you're set and you can hold three at any time. Think about it. I think that's a good way to kind of think about it. Think about it as like a deck of cards that you can have three in your hand at any time. So when you scan in for your first one, you've discarded one of your attractions. I only have two in your hand. So you can go get your third immediately while you're waiting in line. Once you hit that first touch point. So that's kind of a tip there, I guess we could try it. Who knows? We're still early. Maybe they'll not let that happen, but I see this as kind of we wrap up because I don't see any calls coming in. I see this as a net positive. I just wanted to get this time capsule and just get a couple calls, have a discussion because when times change, we don't know how things are going to go and we don't know how this is going to go, but I think I know how it's going to go. And I think this is a positive. I think Disney did listen. I think Genie plus was challenging technologically. And I think it was, it was overcomplicated. The cost issue, that is just a whole nother thing. Everything in the world right now is expensive. Everything is kind of pay to play. You go to the ball game, everything's that way. Everything has an upgrade. I get asked to tip no matter every time I turn around, there's like a tip screen. There's, there's extra charges on everything. I'm just taking that out of the equation because any theme park you go to, you're going to have this kind of a service. If I get a good value, if I get a good return on the service, I don't mind to pay for it. That's why when I went to Hollywood Studios, like I mentioned with Jason, that one day after our cruise last year with Paige, we only had one day before Paige had to go back to Chicago, go back to her basketball team. And she had not seen anything in the studios since Galaxy's Edge came online and since Toy Story Land came online. She had not been in there since COVID, the COVID shutdown. So she only had one day to go to one park. So I said, what park do you want to go to? She want to go to the studios. So I want to give my daughter the best day possible in the one park she wanted to go to. So what I do, I bought Genie Plus for our family. And we used that thing so much and we got everything in the park done. We even had time to sit down at 50s prime time and have a great meal. So did I flinch at the cost? Yes, because I am very frugal with my money. But did I find value in that purchase? Absolutely, I found value in that purchase. So when I get value out of it, I don't complain. So I didn't complain about that. Now, I'm not going to use it for every day because I don't need it every day. But I do like that we get control back and we get options. So seven days out, you make them from home. I think that's going to help us, especially the planners. But I think it's going to be easier to sell for the common guests. I think that'll be a lot easier to, to explain to them. Just, hey, when you get closer to your trip a week out you got to make these plans you know just start planning out and when you get there just boom you're ready to go you hit the ground running you're ready to go it's like reservation it's called the basically the reservations for rides you just got to kind of translate for our friends that are not in the bubble like us 
that are not in the club like us. You're making ride reservations, basically, and they'll kind of understand what it is. And then the other thing is, it, I think, too, is hopefully that takes some of the stress away because I, the 7 o'clock a.m. thing is just really stressing people out, and I think this will help. Like, going down to Walt Disney World again with some attractions, like, in your pocket. That was what was great about the Fast Pass days. You had three, three Fast Passes already booked when you went to Walt Disney World 30 days out. You'll have the same thing finally again after uh, July 24th. You'll have those attractions in your pocket. You know you're going to have them. I mean, that is mentally comforting, I think. So to me, that's a net positive, and I think everybody can kind of get behind that. So we'll see, and I agree with all the magic carpet guys, man, lightning uh, lightning lanes and lookout point and lighthouse, uh, yeah, lighthouse point and lookout key and yeah uh, we'll, we'll learn these names by 2029 but um we'll figure it out but i just think it's going to be a net positive positive. and of course we're going to talk about this for weeks months years to come but this is our little time capsule so we can go back and listen to this a year from now and say ha, boy did they know or boy did they not know when that first came out so i hope you enjoyed today's show i didn't want to miss anything and i just wanted to be here with you guys here to give you some content to think about here on the feed. So until we get back together again, don't forget our show brought to you by the magic for less travel. We'd love to help you plan your next Disney adventure. And the best part, we give you little tips to always put you in the know in your inbox. It always uh, gives you a leg up on all the other folks that you have a great vacation. No additional cost to you. Check out all the details over at the magic for less.com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link. Be our guest podcast.com slash Amazon. And thank you to our Patreon supporters. You guys make all these shows possible. You can support us just $5 a month over at patreon.com slash be our guest podcast. And you'll get a bonus show every week. If you do so, it's called Mike in the Midwest. So come on over patreon.com slash be our guest podcast. Give me a follow on the social media at be our guest Mike on Instagram, Twitter, and threads. And of course, like Jason said, come over and join us in the clubhouse. That's our discord server. Fun Disney talk, no ads. No nonsense, just a great time all the time. Be our guest podcast.com slash discord. We'll see you there today. So get over there. We'll have a live call and show on Sunday night. So join us for that seven o'clock Eastern, six o'clock central. Give us a holler on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Let's talk Disney again. All right. So hope you have a great day. I don't know what day this is coming out in the feed exactly. So I'm just going to say have a great one. So until we talk again, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you real soon. You've been listening to the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. If you have questions, comments, or would like to be a guest on the show, please visit our website at BeOurGuestPodcast.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you real soon.